bring forth after their kind. And that's all we've ever observed. We're going to talk tonight about evolution, Dr. Trevor's at his request, about after uh, life gets started, not about the first part of the evolution theory, which would have to be true. So I'm just going to put this in historical perspective for you. In order for evolution for, to be true, first we'd have to have cosmic evolution, the origin of time, space, matter. We'd have to have an answer for that one. Then we'd have to have the chemicals evolve. There are 92 known elements that naturally occur in, plus the other synthetic ones. They would have to somehow evolve from nothing, from this big bang, hydrogen, whatever it's loaded. Then we'd have to have stars evolve. Nobody's ever seen stars form. They imagine if you were forming where spots are getting brighter, but they've never proven any stars forming. It could be, of course, the dust is clearing and a star showing from behind you. The fact of the matter is that the current estimate is there are enough stars out there that we know about that everybody on Earth got only 11 trillion of them to yourself. And we've never seen the formation of one of them. We see a blow up all the time. That's the opposite, okay? Fourthly, organic evolution, the origin of life. All these are major obstacles, but I'm going to give Dr. Trivers all of these. At his request, we're going to discuss tonight, did evolution happen once life got started? Okay. I don't think any of these four are possible. I think all of them are uh, insurmountable hurdles for the evolution theory. However, we're going to give them all of them. Next, we have to have what's called macroevolution. And this is where the argument really centers tonight. Is it possible for an animal to, to produce a different kind of animal? And is there any evidence that they ever have? Then we have lastly what's called microevolution. I agree with this, one. I don't like the word, but I agree it happens. Variations happen. I'm convinced the first five are purely religious. They are imagination. You have to imagine that it happened. They never are observable. They are outside the realm of science. It's part of somebody's religion. I think it's a dumb religion. Hey, this is America, the home of the free and the land of the slave, or whatever. And you can have all the religion you want, okay? But I present a paying for his religion to be taught in our schools at my expense, okay? Their evolution should start a private school and teach evolution to those that want to pay and come learn it, like any other religion has to do and push their, push their faith. This textbook changes the meaning of the word. It says evolution is change over time. And you have to define this word, because this word is slippery, okay? I agree, things change over time. But watch how they change it in the book. In other words, living things have changed over time. They're just going to automatically skip the first four vital stages of evolution, which would have to happen. And I'm going to skip that tonight, too. Just, I'm pointing it out. These are insurmountable, insurmountable obstacles. Then they say, evolution can be defined as a change in species over time. Well, now, I agree. That happens. I think species can change, but I think the species have limits. One of the lies in the textbooks is this one. That's not really what they mean by evolution. Variations certainly happen, but they have limits. Farmers have been trying for years to get bigger pigs, but they will never get a pig as big as Texas. There is a limit someplace, okay? Roaches in Florida, where I'm from, get resistant to pesticides after a while, but they will never get resistant to a sledgehammer. <laughs> the point is, there are limits, and we can spend all day on that one. Uh, they still produce the same kind, and I'll stick with the Bible word kind, okay? Not species. The information for the variation was already present. You can crossbreed dogs and get a great name or a chihuahua only because the gene code is already in the dog gene code someplace. You don't get new information added. Real evolution would be an increase in genetic complexity. By the time you get to a chihuahua, you are swimming in the shallow end of the gene pool. They have lost a lot of information. And chihuahuas would not last in the real world, by the way. Go ahead, make my day, just thinking. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Real evolution would require an increase in genetic complexity. I would like Dr. Trevers to give us an example of one increase in genetic complexity that's ever been observed. This question was asked to Richard Dawkins. I saw it on videotape. They asked him the question, can you give an example of evolution where there's been an increase in genetic complexity? He was dead quiet for 19 seconds and finally said, shut the camera off, please. He can't think of one. I can tell you why. There aren't any. Okay? There are variations of corn, but they're still corn, okay? You're never going to get away a large tomato or hamster to grow on your corn stalk, okay? There's a variety of wolves, and they had a, probably a, common, a variety of dogs, probably had a common ancestor. This Irish textbook calls it divergent evolution. Oh, come on, it's still a dog. Don't give it a fancy name, it's a dog. It's not divergent evolution, it's a variety of dog. This Mexican textbook says this is evolution from a common ancestor, the horse and the zebra. Nobody argues with that. It's a variety of horse. And there are a lot of varieties of horses available today. Those tiny ones and great big ones. You can crossbreed horses, zebras, you can get uh, zorses, zombies, yonis, z dogs, and zebras, depending on how you cross them. I agree, but you can't cross a horse and a banana or a pine tree or, or an elephant, okay? Uh, Kentucky Derby has proven in the last hundred years they've gone from an average winning speed of 127 to an average winning speed of 123. They've proven there's probably a limit to horse speed. And there's been a lot of money spent on Kentucky Derby trying to get faster horses. I mean, if anything would have shown us evolution, this would have been it. 
and nothing has changed other than just a little tiny bit faster. They probably have come close to reaching the limit of horse speed. There's a variety of cows, I agree, variety of chickens. This magazine offers chickens for sale. You want to get cinnamon queens, red rocks, white rocks, cherry acres, but then it says on the next page, jumbo fowl are the original bird from which all varieties and strains of domesticated chickens are derived. Did you know all the chickens had a common ancestor? It was a chicken. There are eight kinds of bears in the world. They might have had a common ancestor. I don't know. But there could be a bear for one. Probably cauliflower and Brussels sprouts had a common ancestor, but it was a plant. This is not really evolution. Here's an English walnut tree grafted on top of a black walnut stump. They do this all over California because of the English walnut nuts are better and black walnut roots are better. But you can never graft an English walnut tree on the back of a turtle. My whole point is, there are limits. Okay, they're both walnut trees. They're exactly what the Bible says, they bring forth after their kind has proven true in 6,000 years of observed human history. Now, if you want to believe, or any of you want to believe that there's been something other than this happened, you're welcome to believe that, but you just left science and went to fairy tale and don't even realize the problem. Evolution is a fairy tale for grown-ups. It's not a science. Uh, let's see. Um, one more thing here. I collect textbooks. I happen to love the field of science. I've taught it for years, and I, I study it avidly, okay? There's no evidence to support evolution except things that have been proven wrong a long time ago. If some real evidence exists, I want you to show me. Now, last time I debated Dr. Trippers, and again tonight, he mentions several branches of science. You know, astronomy, biology, he throws out these words. He says, I don't believe in them. I do believe in them, okay? I do believe in real science. And I don't want you to just throw out a gen generic term and say, well, biology proves evolution. I want you to give a specific example, a real specific example of what proves evolution. If I had a theory, and I said, I think the moon is made of green cheese, anybody can have any theory they want. Okay. But then suppose I said, NASA proved it when they went there in 1973 on a secret mission. Now I'm using lies to support my theory. It's okay to have a theory, but it's not okay to lie to support the theory. It'd be even worse for me to force everybody else to pay tax dollars to support me while I lie. I am convinced that the stuff that's used in, in the textbooks to support the evolution theory has all been proven wrong. It's a lie. I'm open for evidence. I'm open for discussion. I want to see some evidence for evolution. They say we've got evidence from fossils. Dr. Trevor's mentioned that tonight. This is silly. Absolutely no fossil could possibly count as evolution. Think about it. Imagine you're in a court of law. You bring in your bones, how you found in the dirt. You say, Your Honor, these bones are the ancestors of somebody today. They would laugh at you. You can't prove those bones had any kids. You sure can't prove they had different kids. Why on earth would you think a bone in the dirt can do something animals today can't do? Dogs produce dogs, cats produce cats. No fossils count as evidence for evolution. And this is the biggest evidence they've got. And don't bring it up 10 more times tonight, I'm sure the fossils prove evolution. I'm telling you, just from a purely logical perspective, no fossils could possibly count. Think about it. In a court of law, they wouldn't hold up two seconds. Okay? Evolution's dead. Some followers have a hard time letting it go. They lie and make things, everybody's fine. Oh, you never look better. Oh, folks, the heart rate feel good. Now, I'm not saying Dr. Trevor specifically lies. I don't know if he does or doesn't. But I know the evidence to support evolution in the textbooks is lies. And if he teaches that evidence after he knows it's been proven wrong, then he's a liar. I've never called him a liar, and I wouldn't unless he lied. Okay, I don't know that he has. But if he uses some of these lies to support his theory, then, then it's, it's, it's incorrect, and he should do that at his expense, not everybody else's expense. Okay, textbooks will say natural selection uh, are mutations as part of the process of evolution. I disagree. It doesn't, mutations don't produce anything new. All they do is scramble information that's already existing. 